Hi, my name is Deanna Roca. I'm a registered veterinary technician and I'm board certified in zoo veterinary medicine. I currently work at the Los Angeles Zoo and at the Wildlife Way Station. The Wildlife Way Station is a nonprofit animal sanctuary that provides refuge to approximately 400 animals, including bears and large cats. These animals are very near and dear to my heart, as well as the employees and the volunteers that I've had the pleasure of working with there over the last 15 years. I'd like to tell you about one of the scariest events of my professional life. It uh, occurred a couple days ago, 22nd. Uh, it was a Friday, and I got up in the morning, I went to work, it was like any other day. At about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we got a call that uh, there was a fire that was starting about 15, 10 to 15 miles away from where the ranch, where the way station was located. The About 4 o'clock, uh, we got put on call, it was the end of our shift. We got put on call to be on standby in case we needed to evacuate. And at 10 o'clock, I got that call that the fire was close, it was upon them, and it was time to evacuate the animals. So I headed off to the wildlife way station. It was really scary because as we were driving up, the fires were really close. I was kind of surprised that we were being allowed to go up there at all. The blaze was was bearing down there was ash coming down from the sky the sky was glowing red and it was pitch black at night um, and it was terrifying and I was really scared as we were going up to the ranch so we got there and get down to the health center and I immediately start gathering supplies that I know we're gonna need in order to evacuate the animals. I'm getting darts ready, uh, making sure we have enough needles and tails and that they're ready to go. We will be uh, darting animals to anesthetize them so that we can transport them out of here. I have to pee again. I have to pee too. It's a nervous pee. Mine is just a 40 year old bladder. We have a few crews over by us now by um, Q2. They want to let us know that the fire is coming over the ridge headed down towards us. Well that doesn't sound good. The power and the phones cut out. Cellular service is non-existent at the Wildlife Way Station, leaving us with only radios and face-to-face -face communication. While I'm getting supplies together, there's other employees who are working to get animals crated up. A couple hours being up there flew by, just Boom. We were being told we have to leave right now so the animals that we had created we were able to get into the health center so that at least they'd be inside and away from the smoke and the ash that was falling and we had to leave and my heart just sank and I was pretty numb as we were evacuating and uh, we drove down the mountain and we waited to see if we were going to be allowed back up and it everybody, it weighed really heavily on us. What would we find when we went back up? It was really, it was a really scary time and I was kind of numb, to be honest, I because this place that I care about so much was in peril and I couldn't do anything to help them at that time. So, a couple hours go by and thankfully the fire department said the fire has set down you can come up and you can do one more round of evacuations so we all rush back up we load up all the animals that we can and we start transporting animals again and that one final round of evacuations turned into the next 20 hours of evacuations and all while we were doing this and trying to get some animals anesthetized. We were told numerous times we had only another 10 minutes, then another 20 minutes, 
Then we were told we were okay for the moment and kept going. An hour later, it was the same. You've got 15 minutes. Fires and wind are unpredictable, forcing us to constantly re-evaluate strategies to safely get all the animals and people out. This went on for the next 20 some odd hours of evacuations. By daybreak, there was approximately 11,000 acres that had burned and the fire was still out of control and 0% containment. Thankfully, plenty of trucks and trailers had arrived to transport the animals, but it's a slow process. It's really hard. It's not like the movies where you dart an animal and that they just go to sleep right away. It takes 15, 20 minutes. And so it takes, it takes a lot of time. It's not just a really fast process and you've got to watch them to make sure that they don't have any adverse reactions to the anesthetic. And the quickest and the safest way to evacuate the animals is without the use of drugs. So our first attempt, if possible, is to try to move the animal on its own. For safety, this requires there be a limited number of people and no nearby distracting vehicles or helicopters. Sometimes this works. Take this elderly black bear, Kachina. Her trainer tries to coax her into a transfer cage, but she just wouldn't get in. We must now anesthetize her, which takes 15 minutes for her to fall asleep. Then a team of people must lift the 400 pound bear into the transfer cage. This is not ideal. Someone could be injured during this process, which is why, for the animals who have been previously handled, coaxing the animal in on its own is the best first option. It also eliminates the risk of anesthesia. It is imperative that animals work with trainers to build solid relationships and trust. In the end, we evacuated over 300 animals in 24 hours of non-stop, no sleep work. At 9.30 p.m. on Saturday, July 23rd, the LA Fire Department called the evacuation off. Thankfully, no animals were lost to the fire and now begins the process of bringing them all back home. The Wildlife Way Station is always in need of financial support. A 400 pound black bear eats a lot. But with the addition of the fire, displacement of the animals, cost of transportation, temporary care and drugs and housing, the Wildlife Way Station could really use your support. I urge you to consider to go to www.wildlifewaystation.org to make a donation tonight. Thank you very much for your time and listening.